Hello everyone, so my name is Holly Marshall, I'm a current postdoc at the University of Edinburgh in the UK and today I'm going to be telling you about a paper which was part of my PhD at the University of Leicester with Dr Eamon Mallon and in this paper we looked for genomoid differences in DNA methylation between reproductive and sterile bumblebee workers. Now, before I get into that, I just really wanted to introduce um, the field of research to which this study belongs. So, ecological epigenetics, as with all research fields, is highly variable. But just to give you an example, um, here are some of the things that I'm currently working on. So, for example, we know that imprinted genes exist in some insect species. Um, imprinted genes being genes which display parent of origin allele-specific expression. And we also know whole imprinted chromosomes exist as well. Now, in mammals and plants, imprinted genes are mediated via epigenetic marks. Um, but in insects, we really have no idea how these processes work still. Additionally, you may have seen um, in the literature at the moment, there's a lot of talk about this idea that selection can act directly on epigenetic marks. Um, this is quite contended, and rightly so. Uh, but if that is something that interests you, then please do have a Google of the um, references I provided at the bottom here, because that will give you a really nice update on where we are in the field um, at the moment with that idea. Okay, so what you're all here for. Um, DNA methylation, it's an epigenetic mark. It's the addition of a methyl group to a cytosine nucleotide. It's very different in mammals and plants compared to insects or arthropods more generally. Um, and in insects, it's found generally in low levels and in coding regions, and it's usually associated with high stable gene expression. So have a look at these two references here. Um, and then recently, actually, uh, promoter methylation has been discovered in a couple of insect species, and this has been associated with lower levels of gene expression, um, which is really exciting. So do take a look at that reference at the bottom here. Um, but in my PhD, I worked um, on DNA methylation in a bumblebee species, um, Bombus terrestris, shown here. Uh, this is an economically and environmentally important pollinator species. It lives in primitive eusocial colonies, consisting of a single queen and many worker daughters. These colonies are annual, unlike the honeybee. Um, so every year, all of the bees die off, and it's only new queens that have mated um, that go into hibernation, ready to start a new colony in the spring. Um, now what's really missing from this life cycle is that once a colony gets to a certain stage, or a certain size I should say, um, some of the workers actually become reproductive and they lay unfertilised eggs which develop into haploid males. Um, now Eamon's lab was particularly interested in this because all of the workers in a colony are genetically very similar, um, they're full sisters. So why is it that some of them become reproductive and others don't? Uh, well, some early work done in Eamon's lab in this um, bottom reference here, they found that when you chemically mess with DNA methylation, you actually find an increase in the number of workers that become reproductive. So we really wanted to build on this work and ask naturally, what are the DNA methylation differences um, between reproductive and sterile workers? Uh, so to get at this question, to find out DNA methylation differences between reproductive and sterile workers, uh, we had to raise them up in the lab. So they live in these little colony boxes, these wooden boxes in the lab, and they have a nice little foraging area where they can go and get some pollen um, and some sugar water. And then every day we would go and look to see if new workers had emerged, so callow workers, and they're really easy to distinguish because they have this uh, like shiny grey colour and the wings are curled around the abdomen. And then we would take five of these callow workers, we would put them in a box away from the colony, and this would simulate queenless conditions. Um, and this meant that one or two of them would become reproductive, allowing us to collect our samples. So at six days old, we dissected them out to check reproductive status. And as you can see from these pictures here, it's really clear if an individual is reproductive um, or sterile. So these are the ovaries here. We then extracted DNA or RNA from head tissue, and this was from three reproductive and three sterile workers across three genetically distinct colonies. Um, we pulled the DNA for whole genome by sulfite sequencing, and we sequenced each um, individual separately for RNA-seq. Okay, so what we found. Um, I'm not gonna go into the methods. If you're interested in that, then please um, do look up the paper. 
But the first thing you can see here from this graph is that there are no big differences genome-wide um, in DNA methylation between reproductive and sterile workers. Um, we also found that our species Bombus terrestris has a very similar methylation profile to other hollow metabolous insects. So methylation is enriched in coding regions and it's found in really low levels. Um, and then the other thing we found, which we were surprised at at the time, was that um, the genetic background or the genotype shown here by Colony um, really drives a large proportion of the methylation differences that we found. Um, this is something we're seeing more and more in the literature at the moment as people are able to sequence more replicates. Um, but that was pretty cool a year or so ago. <laughs> Um, and then the last thing I really wanted to point out uh, on this slide was this reference at the bottom here. So this was recommended um, by a reviewer from Evolution Letters and it tells you different ways of calculating the methylation level within a region. Um, and I think if you are working on any kind of non-model um, organism and DNA methylation, then you really need to read that paper. Um, it's really a must read. Okay. So we didn't find any differences um, or big differences genome wide, but then when we looked at differentially methylated genes, we actually found 111 differentially methylated genes. Um, and this was after some really stringent filtering. So I will point out they were involved in a variety of processes. So please do go look up the supplementary go terms um, associated with these genes. Um, but just to cherry pick a few, we did find genes involved in reproduction and in other epigenetic mechanisms differentially methylated um, between reproductive and sterile workers. And so this was really exciting. Um, we then of course paired this DNA methylation data with gene expression data. Um, we did do a differential expression analysis and a differential alternative splicing analysis. Um, but these two papers here do it much more comprehensively in this species. So I'd recommend um, Googling those if that's what you're interested in. Um, but what we found was, as with other holometabolous insects, higher levels of DNA methylation correlate with higher levels of gene expression. And we also found that genes which were differentially alternatively spliced had lower methylation in general than genes which were not. Um, but as you can see, this is a really small number of genes, so take this as you will. Okay, uh, one of the big questions then was, does differential um, methylation correlate with differential gene expression? And as you can see from this beautiful graph, uh, no, it does not correlate at all. Um, and in actual fact, we only had two genes which were both differentially methylated and differentially expressed. So this really allows us to conclude that cis-acting DNA methylation, at least, does not drive differences in gene expression between reproductive and sterile bumblebee workers for our species. Um, the last thing we wanted to ask was whether the differentially methylated genes we found in our bumblebee, whether they were orthologous to differentially methylated genes identified in the honeybee um, by this paper here, and that was between uh, reproductive casts. Um, the answer is no, there were no genes in common. Um, but this is quite interesting in itself, I think, because if um, DNA methylation were acting in trans um, in some causative way, uh, some cryptic causative way that we currently don't know about, um, and is involved in the reproductive process, then it would mean that DNA methylation isn't conserved in function between these two species for reproduction. Um, so of course that's very speculative and it definitely needs more work, but um, that was an interesting find on its own, I thought. Okay, so what I've shown you today. Um, I've shown you that our bumblebee, Bombus terrestris, is very similar to other hollow metabolous insects in the way shown here, in terms of its methylation. I've shown you that um, the underlying genotype does play a big role in the methylation profile of an individual. Um, this is something I'm actually really interested in, and if you're watching this presentation and you work um, in arthropod DNA methylation or arthropod epigenetics, um, and you're interested in this as well, I would really like to have a Zoom copy, so please uh, do get in contact. And then the big thing we found really in this paper was that there are actually consistent differences between individuals and colonies um, in DNA methylation uh, in between our reproductive and sterile workers. And so taken with this previous paper here, which we know um, when chemically DNA methylation is messed with, the reproductive phenotype changes, I think really the next thing to do would be to um, take the candidate list of genes that we have identified 
um, and experimentally add or take away DNA methylation um, through something like the CRISPR-Cas system. And if we do this, we could really try and get at the causative role, if there is one, um, of DNA methylation in this phenotype. Um, so lastly, I just wanted to finish up on where I think um, the field is heading. So uh, DNA methylation is just one epigenetic mark, there are many others, um, and the interactions of these marks with each other and with the genotype um, really need to be done um, thoroughly in order to get a good idea of, of what is happening with the epigenome. Um, and then of course, as I just mentioned, um, it's been really important that we experimentally validate anything we find um, and try and get at the causative nature of some of these marks. So, thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you to these people here who helped in getting this paper out. If you would like to talk um, ecological epigenetics or DNA methylation in arthropods, um, I love to chat, so please do get in contact. And if you'd like to follow up um, specifically on this story with a the bumblebee, then you can drop Eamon an email and he'll be very happy to talk. Thank you very much.